Hello guys, me again. You're probably wondering what on earth is going on here. I flip from kit to kit and bit to bit and doing bits and pieces and stuff. And what happens is I go on the forums and I watch YouTube and I see people comment about stuff and it gets in my head and I have to act on it. Um, it's the same with these propellers. Remember the, uh, the kit propellers? Too short, so I had to look at how to extend them because one of my subscribers said why don't you just add material to the blade rather or wait for the resin ones to come out and pay a fortune for them and i thought yeah he's got a really good point and it just played in my mind and i had to do it so i've done it i made up a jig here's one in the jig now this is the last propeller so um 10 of the 12 blades are done and that was just setting in there now um so yeah that's um it's all going good the other thing is weight in the nose. A lot of people talk about weight in the nose and where it's going to go and everything. And that got me starting thinking as well. And when you actually look at the way the kit is assembled, let's get the instructions here. When you actually look here, you can see that the cockpit is built up. So we've got it's a very detailed cockpit. It's, I'm not sure about accuracy, but it's a, it's a lovely cockpit. Um, so we've got this floor here, which is the sort of roof of the undercarriage bay if you like and then we've got this floor in the cockpit above it now i'm not sure if this is accurate if it should be like that or if that you know if it's actually um if that should be on top of that but the way the kit is made you've got this this section here so you've got this gap in here where you can fit um where you can fit weight basically and the kit instructions tells you to put 300 grams in that on your pen? so um so i started thinking about how to go about this and i looked on large scale meddler and there's meddler large scale modeler and there's a guy on there um i think he's one to one scale he calls himself and he's building one and he's cut up loads of lead rod and and slotted it in that gap and i thought well rod is all good but you're leaving loads of gaps so what i would suggest if you're going to use rod then you get yourself some of these nose weight balls these are tiny little balls of lead see they're all about sort of one one to two millimeter in diameter and pour it in and fill up the gaps um, to maximize the, the weight in that area um, and I know that I keep my bits and pieces I've got some lead sheet so what I've done here I've got the panels this is the subfloor and then this is the cockpit floor that goes on top of it here um, I've got the parts we've got some lovely ejector pub marks in here I've written nice this is this is one of the parts I sent to Peter for the cockpit uh, Peter at Airscale and I made a comment, nice, you know, lovely ejector pin marks. Why they couldn't put them in the back, I don't know. Um, it's not particularly a complex, you know, bit of detail that needed pushing out of the tool, but never mind. Um, so, so basically, um, this is what we've got. So this goes in here, like this. This part goes on the front now. This part is angled. Um, so it basically goes ejector pin marks forward so that goes like that and then this sits on top of there and slots down on those holes there so you've got this this gap here which is about five millimeters there and about seven millimeters there but I've also noticed that when you actually push this down on its pegs it doesn't sit flush there so we actually need to put some strip in here to space it up to get it sitting flat and that give us a little bit more room as well so the one thing we do need to do is see how much strip we need so i'm going to have to measure i'm going to have to measure how much of a step we've actually got there if you're wondering why i've got masking tape on stuff it's just to protect the detail there's some lovely detail on these floor panels and with me knocking them about and turning them over and sanding them and everything i just didn't want to actually um, damage that detail on here there's some ejector pin marks to be got rid of they are very very sh they're not um, shallow they're they're raised but they're not raised by very much is that shallow i don't know so it's just a case of sanding them out no filling no no messing around with them at all so um they all came out lovely i think what i'll do is just brush the mr surface in there let that level out and that'll be um that'll be lovely then um so yeah basically what we've got to do is get some lead in this gap well i've got some flat lead so i've cut it up near my tatty old scales i i'd also do um resin body panels for cars and i use these scales that's why they're covered in splashes of polyester resin as you can see here so um so basically yeah we put these on the bench set them to zero and, and the kit instructions is telling us we need 300 grams 
I'm waiting for someone to tell me if 300 is enough. Um, kit instructions are often a little bit sort of conservative, so you probably want to be looking at sort of 350, 400 grams. But I'm waiting for somebody who's built the kit, and I know there are people out there. One of my subscribers got hold of me and told me he just finished it, so perhaps he could come back and tell me um, if 300 grams is enough to stop it tail sitting. Um, and also beware if you're starting to add a load of photo etch and stuff to it, you know, you start putting flaps on it and, you know, rear turret detail and rear fuselage detail and, and Bombay detail and that, you may start finding that you may need a little bit more weight in the front. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, so I cut this lead up into the right shapes and it's worth noting here that this is going to sit on top of here. You've got this little support ridge that supports the nose gear. Don't really want to chop that off because it does give the nose gear some support so that's going to just pop on there and then we've got a little piece that goes on here and then i've done another piece that goes on top like that and then this piece is just going to sit on the back like that and then all of this will go on around it like that there oops this is actually quite a nice fit on there that stays on its own clips on and then this part on the back, like so. So we've got that like that. And then this cockpit floor will just sit on top like that. And that leans back. So we've got, you can see we've got some lead in there already. And we've got room to get a lot more. Now, i get it sideways on the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. So we've got some room in there. I'm going to put some more lead up in here. I'll cut some more sheet. And then what I'm tempted to do is try and fill in the gaps of those little tiny balls. So um, let me get this, uh, this step here sorted. I'll tell you how much strip I put in there and then you can do the same on your model. And that'll give us a little bit more room. Um, but basically, just this little, this little bit of lead here. Um, you can see we've got 62, 75, 134. 145 grams so we're almost halfway there already and the other thing is if you look over on the large scale modelers website there's this panel here this panel here goes in front of the instrument panel um, you can't really see much of that from the front so what he's done is put another um, false panel in front of it and then another false panel in front of that and added some lead there so basically what he's done is added added a bulkhead on the front here another bulkhead just behind these lugs and then put lead in there so um i think we can easily get 300 grams up in the nose here without destroying any detail whatsoever but um first of all i need to know that 300 grams is correct before i start gluing anything in and um and secondly um i need to get some more cut out and see how much, exactly how much weight i can get in this floor area so uh just keep um just keep watching i'll be back in a minute okay i've um done a bit of measuring and stuff and it works out it's uh 0.75 millimeters or 30 thou is the thickness you need so i've cut a couple of strips here this bandage is not helping at all with my modeling career um it's awful so what i'm gonna do is just gonna put some uh, plastic weld on there and then put this in place just tap it down with my knife then drop a plastic rod on there put that one in place tap it down with the knife whoops a daisy plastic rod has dried out already we could just put that down on there like that there we go what i'm going to do because this stuff dries so fast i'm just going to put a it's really good this is what i'm using is plastic weld it's um it comes in a tall slim bottle which is very easy to knock over so i always decant it into an old extra thin bottle um if you look at some of my comments i think it was yesterday somebody commented they um they put this stuff this is this is the glue here ema plastic weld and they put it in a mr cement s bottle to use and it melted the brush so just shows how hot it is i was arguing a little while ago with somebody about how hot it is compared to mr cement s and um I was telling them that it's hotter and uh, there's your proof if it melts the brush then um, it must be hotter 
so that should just all slot in there now like so what we've got here is basically these two lugs and then we've got these two slots in this part and they just slot over like that so now with that spaced up a little bit more we've given us ourselves another three quarters of a millimeter which over that area is quite a lot I mean have given us ourselves another three quarters of a millimeter to get some um, to get some more weight in there and we've also leveled up that floor so um, and we can tell that it's correct because it sits correctly now on those uh, underneath those vertical uprights so um, there we go that's that done so there's a little mod you can do yourself if you want to okay so second for you it's about 10 minutes for me um, I did notice that it was just a touch too high at 0.75 so you might want to use some 0.5 plastic car 20 thou um, which i think will be too thin what i've done is i've just literally sanded a tiny bit off of here just to make it sit slightly lower and then the floor just clips in and slots underneath those vertical rungs then so you know it's absolutely right then how uh, hobby boss intended it to be so um so that's that done the other thing i'm going to do is on the back here you've got these these raised lugs which are there for the purpose of supporting the the center console um, the center console of the cockpit glues well, there's two parts there's this part and this part they both glue down into the floor through those holes and I don't really think they need all that extra support so I'm going to cut them off and that will enable me to get the uh, lead, lead sheeting up there then um, and I'm also going to put some tape on over them because I may end up putting white glue in there to hold all this in place so I'm going to cut them off and the way I'm going to do that is with my knife I'm just going to come along and just with the edge of the knife just like this just work at it like that and in the end you'll just slice through it if you try and cut it all off at once like this you might end up slipping and cutting your thumb <laughs> like I have um, I actually did this on a, on a plastic drain pipe not on a model kit so um, yeah just with the knife all I'm doing is scraping along just to show you what I'm doing I've got the knife and I'm just doing this I'm just gently cutting along the edge like that and it basically what it will do is end up cutting its way through and then once it's gone through this side it will slice through the rest really easily and I'm safe for doing it down here because otherwise if I slip with holding it in my hands I could cut my finger and there we go that's that gone and then the same here it just this just allows us to slide more lead in there um, because if you don't cut them off you're not going to you know to be cutting the lead around them and everything as I say I wouldn't remove this one because that supports the nose gear and that needs a bit of support but um, certainly the one on the uh, these ones here where the it's just all it's doing is supporting the center console I mean you've got all the floor area to glue to and everything so and I'm just going to get a coarse sanding stick and go over the back of this just to remove any ejector pins that are raised anything that's going to stop us sliding that last little bit of lead in there because we need to get every bit in here we can um, there we go that's all nice and smooth now these here I'm going to leave because they support bulkhead um, those there won't matter unless I use this uh, front bulkhead thing that I was talking about I could always cut them down after they're glued so that now gives us a nice bit of extra room to get this lead in and all I've got is that this is the width of my strip that's why it's made in two sections so um, I'll be okay now with the rest of them so basically I just need to get on now and get some more lead cut okay so I decided to cut these legs off in the end because all that supports is this bulkhead here which is actually M4 and although you can't see it there it's hollow um, it's just literally a frame so uh, it's not really doing anything I've just put this together and tried it in the um, fuselage half and I must say the fit is epic it is fantastic um, very very good it kind of just clips into place I'll show you when it's glued together it's uh, it's incredible um, the other thing we need to do now and this will be handy for you for your references because all the kits are going to be the same this here is 1.8 millimeters thick so I'm going to make a note on the instructions here 1.8 millimeters 
And the reason I've done that is because those legs on the bottom of that part are designed to stick stick down through into that area that I've just cut off. So I need to make sure that they're less than 1.8 millimeters long so they don't foul on the lead underneath and make sure I get a nice joint straight away. And then also with these two parts here, with um, N4 and N28, I need to make sure that they are also um, cut down the same. So the floor there, I'm not including the masking tape, but that's nothing. Uh, 1.6 so if I say 1.5 so that needs to be 1.5 millimeters I'll put an arrow to the lug and then this one also needs to be 1.5 millimeters I'll put an arrow to the lug so now that I know that these these need to be filed down so they're they're not too tall and don't file with anything underneath so that's uh, another little tip I've given you um, whether you wish to follow me on this or not I don't know but I think this is a pretty good way of maximizing this this area that we've got that's free to us to use there are when you actually look at the design um, if I show you a picture here when you actually look at the design you've got the you've got the bomb aimers area here and then you've got the front wheel bay and then you've got this area here behind the cockpit which I guess you could put some weight in but it's further back this area down here is all visible where you've got the the, um, the entrance area. Then you've got the bomb bay. Um, okay, you've got some room on there to put weight, but that's over the wing. It's going to serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever. So the only real area you've got is this area here in front of this bulkhead, as we're saying, the guy from LSM sussed out. Or we've got this area underneath the floor here. So um, I'm going to maximise the weight I can get into that area there. It's also directly over the nose wheel, so it's not actually putting any stress on anything else it's just literally weight sat on top of that lovely brass nose gear that I've got from um, Aerocraft that you probably see me do a review on so um, yeah I mean if you had weight up in here in the sides it's hanging on the side of the cockpit it can shake and rattle loose I mean that's not going anywhere once it's glued together so um, so yeah let's concentrate on this area and get as much in there as we possibly can and once again guys I changed my mind um, I said I wasn't going to cut those lugs off on there, I did, and I've shortened those lugs down there. And then once this is glued in, I can sand that down flat. That now gives me a nice flat area to put a bulkhead on or two bulkheads and get some lead slotted into there. Um, I think really with this area being so over the nose wheel, um, I think it's really going to pay dividends to, uh, to basically get as much weight here as we can on these parts because as I say the nose wheel goes in there so the weight you know any weight we put here is directly on that nose wheel it's not stressing any other part of the aircraft so um yeah I think that would be a good call and then also get some weight on there and that'll transfer directly down that bulkhead and into this panel and as I say again we're not actually going to break anything else off because you have to remember uh, I remember I can't remember what aircraft it was I built something before and it was going to have folded back wings and it had a stupid amount of weight in the nose and um, while I was actually building it, sanding at the fuselage and stuff, the weight came out. It didn't come out, it just got dislodged because it was so heavy and it was sort of held in an area behind the cockpit or something and it just all moved. Whereas this here is just going to be solid as I keep saying. Right, here we go. It's the next day now so it's been a couple of seconds for you and um, and uh, well 18 hours for me so I've got the scales here as, as I said earlier and um, what I've done now I've cut some more pieces of lead as I say I've got this 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 roll of lead and it's not wide enough to do one piece so I've had to do it in, in sections so if I take the floor off here you can see there's this piece here which goes into the floor um, which is in the raised area so all this here needs to be flat now Although I've raised the rear of the floor slightly to um, to get it level with that step, it's still tapered. Um, if I can show you here, the joint, it, it's still a, you can see it's still got a taper. It's thinner at the back than it is at the front. So all I do is I get the piece of lead. I've got a block of aluminium here. And I'm on my one, two, three blocks and it won't hurt it. Um, and just on the edge there, I just... Just beat it and what it does it sort of thins it out and sp spreads it around so what you need to do is just um, after you've done that is just 
very very slightly trim it so that it um you know so that it fits again and uh, I want that to fit in there and not stick out of the sides at all so again if it's sticking out the sides all I'm going to do I'm not going to cut this now because I don't need to but all you do is just mark it with a pencil or a pen you can mark it with anything and um, then you've got a clear line then to cut to so uh, so that's how simple all that is um, now as I say I've cut all of this I've got all these little bits and pieces which I shall keep because they'll always come in handy um, so I've got my scales here and well, what I'll do before I do that I'll show you how it all looks built up um, so we'll put this front bulkhead on here that just slots on there that slots down in there and then this one will slot down on top okay and as you can see if I can pick it up without it falling apart we've got that now completely full of lead all right there's a couple of tiny gaps there. I could maybe get some of these slivers and put them in but um, basically that's that area full of lead and what I'm going to do is just to show you how much weight we can get in there bearing in mind there is there are some tiny gaps still um, so there we've got 54 84 117 bearing in mind this is all trimmed to size now so 128 189 248 so 247 so nigh on 250 grams so now I've only got to find room to put another 50 grams and to let you know how much 50 grams of weight looks like that's 59 that's 61 this is probably 50 54 so it's nothing um, I mean that little tiny piece here is is 20 so there there we go so there's like what's that 40 percent of it so um so yeah and then these little tiny bits here i don't know what they weigh there we go there's 37 grams there's 45 it's um it's going to be easy to get that find that 50 grams and as i say oh there's a piece there missing so actually i was wrong it's more than i said Two hundred and fifty-six grams, so it's less than fifty. We've got to find, and that is so long as the instructions are correct. If it's three hundred grams, is enough, and that's what I need to find out. Is if three hundred grams is enough? If anyone knows, it'll save me mocking mine up and um, and doing all the tail testing, you know, the, the the weight testing and everything. Right, let's wrap this video up. So uh, this is going to be the last segment, guys. Um, I think I'm there. Okay, so looking at where we can put weight um, as you know I've already discussed this area under the under the floor here in this gap so that's all taken care of me. looking at other areas I did think about building up some bulkheads underneath these tables here behind this area and putting some lead in there but the trouble is I think this whole bulkhead is going to get chopped out because I don't think this bulkhead is correct um, you need to do your your, your study but uh, your research but um, a lot of B24s had like a frame here with a piece of plywood on it so um, yeah we'll have a look so I was looking around then and um, I thought well I've got these little ammo boxes here up in the nose so I could probably put some lead inside them so cut these little bits of lead and uh, they fit inside I scrape the inside the ammo boxes out to give them give them a bit more room and so they fit in there like that so they'll be glued up lovely and there's two of those so that should give us the fit together beautifully I can't get the bloody things apart now so yeah what I what I did um, you've got the location pins here you can see I've cut them in half and then where the holes were I've removed the lugs and then just scraped scraped the inside out to give it a bit more room so there's so we've got 50 grams in the nose well, we'll do the nose last and then we can just add up as we get so we've got three there's six grams there so that's six grams in those two um in those two ammo boxes and then i was looking in the cockpit we've got these two uh boxes here with the um the control sticks and stuff on so i thought well i can do them so there's one of them um so there's 12 all told and then 
this part here, this is what I was sent by Peter at Airscale when he, this is what he used for the mock-up on his actual, um, on his uh, instrument panel set. It, um, it, if you're looking for a look back, I've done a review and I'm doing a giveaway on it now. So uh, yeah, that's, this is the actual mock-up he did for his photograph on the instructions. So I'm looking, I could put some plastic, uh, some, um, some lead in there. So that's that one. So that's part N28 and the other one was N4. So this is N4, this is N28. And we can get that lead in there. I've, I've cut this lead and that fits inside there. So now we're up on 20. Um, obviously we've got all the lead that goes underneath the cockpit floor in that void. So there's 275. And then I was also looking then, um, there's another area here. We've got this little floor area that goes behind the nose gear and we've got some room under there, look, um, where I can put some, some, some lead. But it's a little bit tricky. This, this is the parts here. This is the floor. This is M1 and this is F3. Um, again, we've got these raised lugs on the back for the parts to sit into, so I've removed that. And then I've cut two pieces of lead, um, like this, you can see there. And they're designed to fit around these lugs. I've glued these two together and they fit around those lugs. And these are just, this will just get super glued to the floor. Um, and they have actually poured some balls in around it to, to give it better location. But also you have to remember to cut away this area here because when you get further down in the instructions, this, better to show you actually on the step where it comes together. You can see here, that the walkway through the bomb bay actually goes up and under into there. So it clips into this, this recess here. Um, and that's, I think it's one and a half millimeters thick, that leg. So you need to give, leave a gap one and a half millimeters in depth for that walkway to sit up into. So, um, so there's that bit. Um, so that's gonna sit up under there. And this bit weighs 318 grams in total. Take the 50 grams for the nose, 368 grams. And actually we'll take a little bit off of that. We'll say 40. Um, in fact, no, we'll say 30. So there's 300, 350 grams I've got in the nose. Um, and not one bit of it will be seen. Um, I know I talked about doing it the way the guy called one to one on LSM was doing. I'm putting this false bulkhead here in front of the in front of this bulkhead this is actually although it looks solid that is actually just a frame um, and I think the idea of that is when you look into the cockpit you will see down into the nose area I think you'll see when you look down here you'll see down into the nose area through that gap and when you actually look up in the nose area you'll see up up into the um, you'll see the the windscreen so I thought I'd, I'd not do that uh, okay so just getting some um, additional weight into the nose area here um, this area under the floor that I talked about I'm gonna put some balls in there uh, well I've already put some balls in there. I'm just gonna tell you about how I did it what I'm using are these these are the um, I don't know if they're still available I've had them for years the final touch nose weights 200 grams um, and they're basically tiny little lead balls as you can see there um, they're like sort of range between a millimeter and two millimeters in diameter I guess and obviously you can fill small cavities with them um, and what I've done I've used some Gorilla epoxy which comes in this double tube which is handy you can use Aldite it's the same thing um, but just a five minute epoxy and that will um, and that will actually go in there then and cure and I've already done this so I can't really show you how I've done it and also it's because of the length of the fuselage it's not impossible to get on camera but all you do is whatever you don't want to stick to you put sellotape so line the inside of the fuselage with sellotape you know actual sellotape um, don't use the dull stuff just use the normal shiny sellotape I don't think when I say the dull stuff I mean this the stuff that's like um, matte in colour that is invisible on paper uh, I think the resin might stick to it 
but if you use the um, the ordinary shiny cellar tape like this one the clear stuff um, the resin won't stick to it and then you can basically then peel the part away after it's um, after it's cured and all I've done is literally painted inside I've got a cocktail stick covered in um, resin and then forced it down inside the the hole and then pushed balls in and just kept pushing the balls in um, until you couldn't get any more in and then I'll show you what happens you can take the tape off and split the fuselage Got some tape on the back here as well so you can split the fuselage halves and take this assembly out and I've just got this I've already had this apart so it's um it's not really a true representation because all of this area in here would have all been covered in sellotape um or was all covered in sellotape and then um just just take the sellotape off after you've finished um and obviously then i didn't put sellotape on this part because I wanted the, the balls to, to glue to it. You can see I've got a couple of voids there, but I'm not really too worried about that. Um, so basically, yeah, just by doing that, I've managed to gain an extra 26 grams. So, um, the 25 grams, that's like 8% of all the weight we need. So um, if I just get all the other weight together, then we'll see what we've actually got. Right, this is the actual nose weight from underneath the uh, the main floor sections. So there's our 256. Here's the bit I've just done, 281. Then we've got our two ammo boxes that go in the nose, 289. This is the two pieces of lead that are glued together that go underneath the um, the area <clears throat> behind the nose gear underneath these parts here so that just fits in there I could put some more bores on that if I wanted to but as you can see we're all over the, already over the 300 then I've got the consoles that go inside the cockpit so there's 340 and then a little bit of lead that's in that one behind it 345 grams so far so um all in all we've done the over, over the 300 now the thing is 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 where it is in the fuselage now the, the furthest the rearmost point of any weight is here most of the weight is here which is what we need just directly over the nose wheel we've got a bit here and a bit in the um, ammo cans and a bit in the ammo boxes should I say and a little bit actually in the cockpit as well so overall I think we may have enough hobby boss hints at 300 in the in the manual um, and they point they point at this area so where you're supposed to put 300 grams in there I don't know but um hopefully that's enough and of course there's always we could always put some weight in the engines if we want to um, I mean if you if you use a resin nose wheel you could drill into the nose wheel radially and, and put weight in there and then fill it and blend it make it look pretty again in the tire um, there's more than one way to skin a cat but the one thing I, I've tried to do with this video, and um, I just know I'm going to get comments to say do this, do that, do something else. But the, the main thing I'm trying to do is maximise the volume of space I've got by using flat sheet and, and balls, not using large chunks of, of lead. Um, and also try to get the lead in locations where it's not necessarily putting any strain on another joint. It's like, for instance, if I put a load in the engine cowlings, um, I'm putting strain on the actual engine cowlings themselves um, when you pick the aircraft up you're putting weight actually hanging on the on the wings on the wing joint so you know trying to keep all the nose over the nose wheel or the weight sorry over the nose wheel and in locations like under here the only stress that goes anywhere is into the bottom of the fuselage whether you pick it up or if it's you know on the ground it's just sat there it's a dead weight has like all these panels in between those two cockpit floors they're not going anywhere they're, they're, they're sandwiched in there they're not causing any stress to anything um these are a bit of a problem i guess because you're gluing these in on this area here and if you gave the model a knock sideways it may break them off but i'll make sure they're well glued in 
Um, same with these in the cockpit, you know, but they got, you know, quite a lot of area to glue down. So, um, so there we go, guys, that's that. And um, in case you're wondering, this beautiful piece of work here is from the <clears throat> air scale instrument panel upgrade for this model. You see, I've done a review of it. I've done a giveaway on it. And um, this is actually the mock-up that Peter made for his instruction book. So if you've got this set, if you look on the instructions, you've got a picture of the built-up set. This is those actual parts and he's kindly returned them to me. Um, if you don't know the story, I wanted this done. I contacted him. I sent him my kit parts and instructions. And now we have a, a set. And there's the, if you just if you haven't seen it already, there's the beautiful instrument panel there, unpainted obviously, but um, yeah, it's gorgeous. Very, very sharp, very, very um, full of features. It's lovely. So, um, so there we go, guys. There's our 345 grams of weight, um, all in nice solid locations. I could probably get it up to about 370 if I added some lead balls around this section here. This basically, just to show you, this sits on here like that and then this part sits in here like that okay and already you can see from the work I've done I've got to remove these stiffeners here because they're preventing any they're preventing it from sitting down properly so um yeah I've got to just just take those away there right so <clears throat> that's that lead now all trimmed down um and that fits in there lovely I may put some balls in here, but don't really. There's not going to be a hell of a lot of additional weight. But um, I'll show you what I've done to make this fit. Um, so you can see that fits in there. What I've done: these ribs around the bottom. You can see I've trimmed away their extremes. So um, they were like this. So I've just basically cut them away. Um, and the lead. This piece is. This is all just taped together the lead which is taped in place you can see what I've done is this is the beauty of using the sheet rather than bits and pieces is you can beat it into a shape so you can see there in section you can see I've beat it into a shape to match the bottom of the fuselage so it fits in there nicely therefore maximizing the the amount of lead I can get in there um, that edge there needs to be thinned out a bit more, I think. Uh, but um, so there, you can see that's how that's how we did that bit there. So it's worth getting that little bit in there because that little piece alone weighs forty-one grams. So you know it's, it's worth it's worth getting that piece in there. If you want to follow my lead, carry on. If you want to use balls or whatever. Um, but just remember if you use anything like uh, wheel weights or rod or little tiny bits of scrap or whatever, wherever there's an air gap, air gap, air gap there could have been some weight. So perhaps get some of these balls um, and just fill up all the gaps and uh, get over that 300 grams. So thanks for watching. I hope you like this. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, see you all soon. Bye bye.